My name is Bill Golis, and I will be your presenter today. Today's topic is, is Epicor 10, the user interface and navigation within the new software. So let's get started. Uh, one thing that you'll notice when you look at the login screen for the new Epicor 10 is that uh, there is a checkbox here, right here, for classic style. We're going to take a quick look at that. The classic style, as you might imagine, is very similar, a, a virtually the same look and feel as Epicor 9. You'll uh, probably be familiar with this, uh, with your top level tree here on the left, with your companies and your uh, your modules, and on the right here, the contents of those folders as you break them down with your um, with your forms and your actions from the application. And the same familiar toolbar here at the top, very much the same here as as Epicorn 9 on the classic style. I'm going to close that out because we are here to look at the new user interface today. So we'll log in again without the classic style. And we will see the new home page of Epicor 10. Epicor 10 is built around tiles. And there is five uh, default tiles here on the home page. Uh, your recently viewed forms that lists uh, things that you've had open in the application recently your favorites that you can uh, select and add at your leisure, the Epicor main menu, settings for uh, adjusting the settings in the software, of course, and the help screens. Also, from, uh, from anywhere within the application, there is a pull-down panel here at the top. See that little carrot brings it down and puts it back. This panel is uh, similar to a Windows taskbar, but with a little more pizzazz and detail. Uh, it shows what's currently running within the application, and you can navigate between uh, the, uh, the, uh, the things that are running within the app from here. Also, at the bottom, there is a little pull-up panel. And that's where they have your change user, change language, and workstation, and uh, the solution tracking uh, device, which is new. We won't be covering that today, but for those of you who use solutions to deploy customization uh, that was new in 9, it's a very nice and an improved tool here in Epicor 10. I do like it a lot. Then you also have your developer mode uh, toggle switch, which is only going to be visible if you are uh, have permissions to be a developer. And finally, in the bottom panel here on the right, is the add tile uh, button to add tiles to the application and to the screens. Uh, let's go ahead and add a tile here to our home screen. When you select the Add Tile, first you have to decide what group the tile is going to belong to. You can have no title, favorites, Epicor, or create your own new tile group, which is what we will do here today. And we're going to call it Vendors. Then you have to select what type of tile that you want. Uh, you can have a link within the tile uh, to a URL, a program, a document, or a form. Uh, the URL can be either on the internet or it can be on your local intranet. Uh, for instance, you can have a link to your SQL Server a reports folder for Epicor 10, so you can jump right to your reports. Uh, very handy. Uh, you can have your tile before a BAQ gadget that you have created in the application. You can make another favorites list, just a general tile or the Epicor social media, so you can see streaming messages uh, from the social enterprise module. If you ha have that, um, if you have that module, uh, you can monitor LinkedIn and Twitter and such. 
Uh, we are going to go with the link here for our example today. And you can, as you see, can see here, it can be a form, a, a URL. It can be a program on the PC or on the network, uh, a document. We are going to go with a URL. And what should we do? Let's do Code of Bears, our website. And the link title, we'll also call it Code of Bears. Da -da. And then you have to decide what you want displayed on the link tile. Uh, the default is just a colored background. Uh, you can do a snapshot of what's actually in the URL, which is what we're going to do. Or you can choose an image. If you have a picture that you want to display there, uh, you can just browse to it right uh, down the network or on your machine. So we're going to go with the URL snapshot. And we're going to say, yeah, let's refresh it periodically. Every minute should be fine. Or actually, also that there be five minutes. <clears throat> And we'll go to the next. And the last thing you have to choose here is the size of your tile default and the expandability. And we'll stick with the one by one for our initial size. And if we want to go expandable, we have to tell it how big it can go. And we'll go up to three by three. And then we'll save it. That tile pops up. And you already see that there's something in there. That is uh, the current state of the Code of Bears homepage. If we double click on the tile, it will open up. And just uh, like you're in Internet Explorer or, or Firefox or Chrome, you can navigate around the web page while you're in the application. And you'll notice if we pull down our top panel, it shows that's running. So that's how you create a tile. And, uh, and we set that to refresh every five minutes. So if this page were to change, it would refresh. If we want to make it to the you know, three by three so we can see some more real estate, we can do that as well. All right. Uh, looking at our settings next. From within the settings, you can change your uh, a general options, your color scheme, <clears throat> personalize the home page, the splash screen, or the search window. We'll go right to our preferences here, and, and let's uh, take a look at the themes. We have the default theme running right now. You'll notice that there is uh, pre-populated themes, and each of them has a uh, versus clean room and clean room touch. Each one has a touch version, which is designed to uh, work better with a touch screen interface on Windows 8 or on a tablet or a, a smartphone. Uh, for today, we're gonna stick with clean room, or we'll try clean room. We say okay, and uh, th uh, that won't uh, take effect until we log off and log back on when you change your uh, your uh, a, a, the overall theme like that. Also, we can change our colors, you know, just like before. Uh, if we don't I like our current, we can do something with a bit more pizzazz with the red. Save that. And you'll see right away uh, within our home screen we have the red colors and such. Uh, a, a word about colors is that uh, with Epicor 10, even if a system administrator sets up a color scheme uh, you know, to identify a database, uh, your test versus live, or, or to identify a company site, uh, which is common, the, the users can still change that. Uh, regardless of how the assist admin sets it up. Uh, that's probably a bug that will be resolved later, but just a, a be it known that if you use colors to identify your databases or your sites, uh, with the current version of 10, this is 600, uh, the users can change it. Okay. Uh, 
and while we're here, let's take a look at the search capabilities from 10 as well. And you see up here in the right-hand corner, you have your navigation and go forward and back. You have your, your home screen button, and here's your search button. And when you select search, notice that you get a whole different search than we ever had on Epicor before. This is a really nice feature. Uh, by default, you have your Google, your menu, and your and your enterprise search, assuming that you own the enterprise search uh, and module. And a menu search is very handy. It brings up all of the items from the Epicor 10 menu. And if you just type into the search panel, your first letter, a right away, it will start to uh, sort. If we go to part, see, here's all our part screens. A very handy to be able to locate things within the application and that you may have a hard time finding. Also, the uh, a search engine feature here from like Google, a very handy. Uh, you're able to go right to a web page without having to get out of the application. And we'll go back home here. And I'm going to show you that we can also customize that search uh, screen and we can add additional search engines that are offered here. Let's say we wanted to put on Wikipedia and Amazon because we buy a lot for the company from Amazon and we want to have Wikipedia to do a little bit of research. You'll see now we have all of those available. If we go right to Amazon, it should bring up the Amazon homepage, and it does. All right, back to our home screen. Next, we're going to look at the main menu. Right here to the upper core main menu, and you'll see that the default views uh, are pretty much similar to what you're used to from Epicor 9. Uh, on the left panel here, there's two options. Uh, the tree view, which is the default, and the zoom. Uh, and right here on the upper right is where you select between those. There's your zoom view and there's your tree view. If we go to the zoom view, you'll see you get much larger icons. The zoom view is geared towards a touch to interface. Uh, so you have much larger icons where you can select with your finger and much easier. Zoom versus tree. And then in your right panel, it's tile versus list. Pretty much the same functionality. The list is what you're used to from uh, the standard Epicor 9 and such. And uh, within uh, here you can select the tiles view, which is uh, similar to your zoom view, in that you have much larger uh, icons that are designed for touch screen interfaces. All right. Oh, and uh, let's talk about uh, favorites while we're here. And from any uh, screen here, you can just right click and you can choose add to favorites right here at the bottom. So we did our product group, we'll add that. And we're gonna add it to our favorites and just save it. And if we wanna add our uh, from General Ops, well, it, it, it will add a couple of more. Our Kanban receipts, and add the favorites. Then you'll notice if we go back to our home screen, on our favorites, we have a, a, the product group now and the Kanban receipts. Some new uh, features with Epicor 10. You remember uh, from within
from within uh, any uh, form. It's a little slow here. From within any form on uh, any 10, you can select a options I'm sorry tools options and from there you have your options to uh, personalize your forms uh, under global options we have the toolbar setup this is a very handy one that uh, people have been asking for for years and the default setup with the toolbar here is that your save is right next to your delete and uh, obviously that makes it possible to click on one when you want to click on the other uh, we've always thought that it, it would be good to move that delete away from the save and now and we have an option to move the, the, the delete tool so we'll put it here after the clear and watch it it'll jump down and here it is now <coughs> after the clear so that removes it from being next to save a very handy for safety hey this will uh this will apply to all forms now for that user back to tools here and options some other things we can do on here is we can have to have required fields highlighted if you select the required fields uh, control here and you choose a color you'll see that it will and now highlight each required field with the red border which shows the users what needs to be filled in before they can save that record now a couple of things let's go back to our list view our tree view here and our list view so we're standard uh, as always some commonly some commonly used items uh, from the previous a version have moved from where you're used to them being uh, and one of the things that has changed a uh, quite a bit is the uh, the system management uh, is now broken into two parts into the system setup and system management system setup has your security stuff your system agent menu and your data dictionary and your system management has the more day-to-day -day stuff here uh, with your BAQs your BPMs and your reports report styles and such I noticed that the reports now have their own folder so the the uh, report style and report uh, data definitions are now contained within the reporting folder oh and one more thing is that the uh, the right click context menus now are fully customizable you can add things like custom dashboards or you know baqs uh to the right click functionality and that all works from the context menu uh, it's it's not going to be covered under today's discussion but if you wanted to do so and you can't find where it's at just go to your menu search and put in a uh, context menu and you see right here we have our context a menu maintenance well that's about all the time that we have for today for Epicor 10 navigation thank you very much and I appreciate your time